Hi, welcome. This is Jelle, Growing Bonsai. Today, I'd like to look at this nice azalea that I have here. This video has been a year in the making. The first images were shot one year ago when I was wiring this tree out. Now I'd like to show you what I did. And the aim of my wiring was to create these nice horizontal pads on this azalea. This will really show off the flowers when it starts flowering. The reason for wiring azaleas in the late winter rather than in summer is quite clearly seen here. Every little lump of leaves that you see here is actually a flower bud. So by cleaning it out now, putting little wires to it and positioning them, you position the branches in a way that the flowers come out best when they start flowering. Most azaleas are grown for flowers. And as such, many people don't really consider them bonsai. And to be honest, for this tree, that is fairly true. I'm sitting next to this very tall azalea tree. Um, which I wired out over the last couple of days. It's been quite a bit of work. Unfortunately, two years ago, the whole plant was blown around in a storm. And I found a tree in the morning with the pot broken. So for the last 12 to 18 months, it has been recovering in a plastic container. So it has not been pruned. It had not been wired for the best part of two years. Um, the tree is grown in a sort of literati style with horizontal pads that really bring out the best of the flowers. But for most of the year, it is just a fairly boring tree. That being said, for a few weeks a year, it is really, really gorgeous. This is not a Japanese azalea. This is a European variety or a garden variety that does well in my climate. Local species are often much better suited for the climate, so you don't need to offer all that much protection. Having said that for many people, these species do not make great bonsai. A few years ago, I had the opportunity to go to Japan. Um, I'll show you a couple of pictures. And there I saw some amazing specimens, but also there flower display was the main element for this species. One of the things I've done is quite nicely seen in this band. I've put all the branches out in one equal plane. Um, you see that on the outside there's most of the branches, but on the inside I've also left a few. This way sunlight can enter the whole pad. All the branches get enough light so that after the flowering the branches will start creating buds here. That way I can decide whether I want to let the pad grow out or next spring, reduce it back in and make it shorter. To illustrate what I was saying before, I've changed the camera angle and now you can once again see all the branches are in one plane, all radiating outwards from one point next to this. What I've tried to do 
is prune away as many branches as possible and reducing all intersection to two branches. So it splits in two, 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 and it ends in two. If you have trouble getting your azalea to flower, maybe you're pruning at the wrong time of the year. This species starts to create their buds in the middle of summer. After the 21st of July, when you start pruning it, you might run the risk that the tree has already started to create the buds. So effectively, by pruning after the 21st of July, you might be pruning off the flower buds. Prune early, wire in winter, and then you can see where the buds are so that when you prune them, you don't prune off the flower buds. Here you can see a pet that's further developed. The bottom is still flat, but the profile of the branch has a higher point in the middle. Effectively, I thin out the outside as much as possible and the top I let grow out. So if buds pop on the inside, I let them come up. That way you get a dome, which in profile later on will create a nice pleasing mount of flowers. The downside of flowering azalea, you need to remove all the flowers after it's done. Let's see whether this works. One, two, three. Oh well, I guess that didn't work. So there we go, I'll do it by hand. When removing the flowers, it is very important that you don't just remove the flower itself, but you also remove the stem and a little start of the seeds. Um, seeds take a lot of energy from the plant, so you have to remove them. When you remove the flowers, it's fully up to you. I personally remove the flower as soon as the first ones start to fall off naturally. That's for me the moment that the flowering is past its peak and I don't want to actually stimulate the rest of the flowers. Right now it's the middle of May. This tree has been flowering, it started flowering maybe two weeks ago, three weeks ago, so I've enjoyed the flowers for a bit. And now I want to invest again in growing better branches for next year. If you don't remove the flowers and the seed base, then the plant will continue investing in seed rather than in growth. To develop your bonsai tree, you want growth. You see me now using this nice pair of scissors. You don't need to use scissors. You can also just grab the base of the branch with the flowers. With the other fingers you grab the flowers and the seed bed and you just gently tug. It is in general a faster way of removing all your flowers. Of course, because this tree is wired, there is a little risk that you deform the branches by holding and pulling all the time. So be gentle, work carefully, enjoy the process and yeah, See the potpourri on the floor forming underneath you? Looking down at the pot, you see a few things. First of all, I still need to work on the old dead wood. At the moment, this lower branch is somewhat weak and I'm leaving it alone. Otherwise, I would have cut this out um, as azaleas are able to close those wounds. The second thing to note is I have taken out much more foliage on the bottom than on the top. That is because azaleas are not top dominant. They grow stronger at the bottom than at the top. So you leave more foliage on top than on the bottom. Finally, I'd like to draw your attention to this gorgeous pot. Um, this pot was made by a potter in Europe, Marjan Meert, and he has this amazing dark red glaze. Later on, when the tree is flowering, it has a very deep pink color, which I hope will blend perfectly with this pot. But this is something we'll see later on. You can also see the shape of the pot. It's called a feminine pot because it has lots of curves, um, gentle movement and a lot of illustrations. This fits well with the shape of this azalea tree and in general with an azalea. I'll leave a few flowers on, um, especially on the lower branches. Lower branches in azalea are stronger than the upper branches. So yeah, I think that's it. I'm done for now and I'll let this grow for the season. Thank you for watching.
and see you next time.